in this video, these are the books that I did not give five stars to necessarily, but some of you may really enjoy them to the point where you give them five stars. I don't want anything, I don't want anybody to think this is a video of books where everybody gets a trophy. Hi Booktube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March. Today's video is a video I like to do. This is a year-end list of the best above average books that I read last year. And yes, I will have my own video of the best of the best, probably in another day or two. It's kind of a requirement for being a booktuber. <laughs> and, and I just enjoy doing it. But the reason I like doing this type of a list is I read a total of 47 four-star books last year. And that's one of the things I like the most about Goodreads is it keeps track for me all the books that I read and how I felt about them, their ratings. So Goodreads is, is a star rating system. Five stars is the best. One star is the worst. It also lets you record DNFs if anybody is unfamiliar or doesn't use Goodreads. But why I like to do this type of list is these are still really good books. And if you don't take recommendations or if you don't hear or see recommendations about uh, really good books, you might be missing out. And these are really good books that I truly enjoyed last year. For me, a five-star book is a combination of exceptional writing, um, very deep and exceptional character development, and an emotional punch that I get from reading that book. These are these are excellent books that are written quite well. Some of them have great stories and plots. I don't need a plot specifically to rank a book a five-star book. But these are really good. And you may love some of these, and you may have already read some of these and rated them five stars. So let me show you what I thought about these four-star books. I've got them in order. Um, I've got 12 books corresponding to one a month. And I've got them in order from 12 to 1. So um, not the worst of the list, but from lowest on the list to highest. So the first one I have is Tim Winton's Breath. When I read this, this is a surfing novel. This is a novel about surfing. Tim Winton is an Australian author. This book was published in 2008, so it's a 12-year-old novel. This is the story of two young boys who need something to do over the summer, so they decide to start surfing. And they get involved with a group of surfers that pretty much hang out on this particular beach. But eventually they come to know and uh, look as a mentor to a former champion surfer um, who basically shows them how to surf exceptionally how to take risks, how to do things in a dangerous way, whether it's for their best or not. But along with getting to know this man, they start to realize the complexities and the dysfunction of his personal life. I really like Tim Winton's writing, and this was a very good book. Like I said, I have no experience, knowledge, or love of surfing. I've never been a surfer, nor will I ever. But I really liked this book. It was very well written. I liked the story. And the setting was awesome. It's on the beaches of Australia. So I really enjoyed that one. The next one is Nalo Hopkinson's Sister Mine. This is a, an urban fantasy story with some Caribbean folklore tied into it. Magical realism, magical characters. It tells the story of Makita and Abby, who are sisters and demigods. It is um, set in a city atmosphere. Uh, it, it talks about, at one point, they were born conjoined, and the, the surgery to separate them left each of them with specific powers. And it's a really interesting, twisty book talking about the extended family of demigods and the interactions, the dynamics. There's kind of a, we need to find our father, kind of a mystery. And I really like this book. This was a book where I put it down for a little while because there was kind of a, a yucky storyline, an incest storyline. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a fantasy novel. 
it's not that I overlooked it, but I, when I put it down, I wasn't sure I was going to go back to it, but I did. And I ended up really enjoying the novel. So that was book number nine. Number eight is Excellent Women by Barbara Pym. Um, I read Quartet and Autumn by Barbara Pym last year, and that for me was a five-star book. This one is an excellent book. I gave it four stars. This is the story of um, Mildred Lathbury. She's a clergyman's daughter and a spinster set in England in the 1950s. And she is one of those excellent women who's typically a group of church ladies who do a lot of serving and giving of their time. They support the the pastoral leadership of the church. They get involved in their community. Um, they do a lot because they don't have a husband or family. They, in Mildred's case, she's not desperate for that, but she she does a lot of exploration of her own independence and her own life to decide what is it that she really wants. And I, I really love Barbara Pym's writing. Barbara Pym and Anita Bruckner are similar. Most of their themes are quite different um, because most of Barbara Pym's novels have something to do with women in the church. So I really like that. Um, this one, speaking of women in the church, this is In This House of Breed by Rumor Godden. I read this for uh, maybe Midrash last year in May. And it's the story of Philippa Talbot who leaves a career in civil service for her calling to be a nun. And she's a, she's 40, 40-ish. She's got a past and a background. It it talks about her experiences joining a, a company of nuns and what she relinquishes, what she surrenders to do that. It talks about her finally coming to terms with her past and what it's going to mean for her life going forward as, as she kind of lives with this role as a nun and in service to God. I really enjoyed that book. Oh, let's see. The next one, I think this is number seven. No, eight. I don't even remember. Twelve. One, two, three, four. Yes, this is number eight. Sorry about that, you guys. <laughs> and it's backwards. This is The Door by Magda Zabo. And she's a um, Hungarian writer. This book is translated by Len Ricks. And this is the story of Magda, who is a writer. She's educated. She's married. She and her husband are both academics. And it's the story of her relationship with Emerence, who is her housekeeper. She's kind of, she comes from a peasant class, is illiterate. Um, she lives alone that in a house where she doesn't let anybody inside. And they develop a relationship with a very special dog. And this was very good. This is, a, it was a really interesting um, thing to explore between a woman, an academic educated woman and her relationship with her illiterate housekeeper. They come to form a dependence on each other. And it's a very small town that they live in. There's a lot of, you know, looking into their lives and it, it's exceptionally well written, and I really love the novel. And the number seven book I listened to on audio, and it is Citizen by Claudia Rankin. This is a book that is written, it, it alternates between poetry and essay and observation about the Black experience in America. Claudia Rankin writes about racism, race relations. She writes about police brutality and police prejudice. Um, she discusses the experiences of both black men and black women, and it's extremely powerful. One of the most powerful quotes that I won't ever forget is, because white people can't police their own imaginations, black people are dying. And I, I, it gave me chills, and that's the, that's the power throughout the whole book. Now, I am up to my top six. Number six is a, a short story collection, and this is Heads of the Colored People by Nafisa Thompson Spires. I really liked this collection, and I am not a big short story fan. I don't automatically go and reach for a short story collection, but I read this one and I really enjoyed it. It's a very good example of a collection with interlinked characters. So the characters move one, one or two characters might show up in the next story or the next two stories. And I really liked that. 
This is, it's, an, it's her debut, and the back says uh, she grapples with race, identity, politics, and contemporary middle class in this vivid, fast, funny, way smart, and verbally inventive collection. These stories fearlessly shine a light on the simmering tensions and precariousness of Black citizenship. So this is a very good collection. And for a debut, I'm really looking forward to whatever else she comes out with next. And I would that would be an immediate buy for me. Um, number five on my list is Queen of the South by Arturo Perez Reverte. This I read for my In Real Life book group with the Critical Chicks. This is a novel that details the experiences of a female drug lord from Mexico. And then sub subsequently she ends up in Europe and has her base in Spain. I had never read anything like this. I had never read a novel like this. This is an older novel. It was published in 19, no, 2002. So it's an 18 year old text. Um, this I believe was based on a true person, true life story and really, really interesting. At first, I wasn't sure how I was going to like it because it's quite violent. It's quite raw. There's a lot of talk about rape and violence and crime and drug abuse. So it, not necessarily the type of book that I would initially gravitate towards, but I finished it and I really liked it. I liked his writing. I had a quibble with the fact that he's, he's writing it with the story of a journalist who's a narrator. I didn't necessarily think he needed that technique in order to propel the novel forward, but um, I really liked the writing and I really liked that book. The next one is number four, and this is a memoir. This is Know My Name by Chanel Miller, and I think everybody knows who this author is, what the story or him, this memoir is about. Chanel Miller was the Jane Doe in the Brock Turner rape case, and she, for her long time, she was anonymous. The story came out of her sexual assault on a college campus. She was unconscious and was basically saved by two young Swedish grad students who came upon Brock Turner raping her, basically saved her life. And she pulls the pieces together of what happened to her. And this details those experiences, her emotions. It details the legal ramifications and her emotional and mental ramifications of that experience. Um, it's such a powerful story. It's, it, it takes some effort to get through this book because it's very painful and very enraging. But by the end, she includes the transcript of her victim statement at the end of the book. And it's, it's tear inducing. And this book is so maddening for, for any woman who has any experience with sexual assault or knows somebody that has any experience with that, especially on a college campus context. Um, very good book. She's, you know, she's not necessarily an author with a lot of authorial, authorial experience, but the simple bravery of putting this into print and getting it out there is exceptional. So I really, I really did. That was a very valuable reading experience. That's not the kind of book you say that you can enjoy. Uh, let's see, number three of some of the best four-star reads of my year last year is Sarah Waters' Fingersmith. Wow, this was this is a novel that has very Victorian atmosphere vibes. Such an incredible mystery and twisty turny book. Great plot, amazing plot. Um, well written, very interesting character studies, very Dickensian in its tone. Um, this is also a book with a lesbian storyline. I don't know if that's a spoiler or not, but it is. So um, I really loved reading this. Fingersmith is a kind of a name for a petty thief. And it's it was so good. It was so immersive. Um, really good mystery. Really good twisty. Really good what the what moment in the middle and at the end. So that was so good. My number two book is a modern classic. It is Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. Um, I'm not sure I can possibly give this description justice. This was first published in 1952. I just read it in February. Well, I read it. I started to read it. I got halfway through. I put it down. I picked it back up over the summer and finished it. Extremely glad that I did. 
first published in 1952. And this is basically the experience of a black man who is treated as if he's invisible or is treated as a criminal. And unfortunately, those are very similar experiences and common experiences for black men in this country. Um, this, this character journeys from the deep south to the streets of Harlem um, from a horrifying battle royale that he has to fight blind other black men in order to get the advantage of being sent to college, of getting a college scholarship. And it talks about those experiences in the South and how he migrates to the North and ends up in Harlem. It talks about race relations, racial conflict, um, battles in the streets. It's an exceptional book discussing and exploring racism in the 50s. And unfortunately, too much of it applies to racism in the States at this contemporary point in time. And my number one four-star read of last year is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I don't need to describe what this book is about. Um, the reason I gave it a four-star was I had some big issues with Mr. Rochester and that storyline and his emotional manipulation of poor Jane. Um, she's an orphan that leaves a, her orphanage slash school where she has worked as a teacher to go out into the world and she, the first job, the first position she gets is as a governess slash teacher for the ward of Mr. Rochester at Thornfield Hall. Um, it's extremely accessible as a classic and this would be a great classic for people who want to start reading classics and don't know where to start. And even though it's, it's a fairly long book, the writing is very easy to access and to understand. And it's a good story. Um, Jane Eyre is an exceptionally outspoken, independent young woman. She's resilient. She's extremely strong. It talks about the development of her independence, her personality, her strength and character, contrasted with that of Mr. Rochester, who's probably twice her age. It's There's a love story. But more than that, it's talking about Jane Eyre as developing into a whole person with her own agency, making her own choices, even though it's the 1800s Victorian England for a young orphan woman. Um, it was very good. I'm so glad I finally read it. I had never read Jane Eyre before. And um, it was it was the best four star read for me last year. So I highly recommend all of these four star books. They were my four stars. They may be five stars for you. Some of them may not be, but these are some really good four-star books that I can recommend. Again, I read 47 books last year that I ranked four stars on Goodreads. So this is a very small portion, um, about a quarter of them. And there's so many more. So don't be, don't be intimidated to pick up somebody else's four-star books and you might discover something that is exceptional to you. Write me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, I hope you're reading something good. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon in the next video. Bye, everybody.